Good afternoon. We're so glad you're here. We daily vlog, so if you enjoy this video, come on back tomorrow. We just finished live streaming. It was such a good one. I'll link it here if you want to go ahead and watch. Um, but we're going to start our big moving room day. Uh. Or at least you are. So, yes, like Sarah just said, oh, it's starting to get a storm. Um, today is the day we might, I think there's like this much of a chance we might go to the to city walk later. Depends on how productive and how quick and not exhausted I am. I'm supposed to run 11 miles. Oh, it looks like it's going to storm. See the wind? Everything was I like, mean, it was like, socks. It's so cold it was like the Wicked Witch of the West out there on a bike. Um... <laughs> I gotta move all of our furniture and everything to the other room, the other room. But first, um, we were talking about getting Whoppers. <laughs> we were talking, this, is, this shot is going down real quick. We were talking about getting Impossible Whoppers from Burger King because Sarah's hungry. And who was, it was Lupe, right? Lupe. The Ortiz family gave us a super chat in our live stream and said, get all the Whoppers. Oh my gosh. So I'm gonna go get some Impossible Whoppers and maybe some McDonald's french fries. Oh my gosh. We're gonna come back and Sarah will hopefully we'll have the vlog up and ready to go by then. Yeah, it's already uploaded, I just have to do all the details. Oh my gosh. All right, I'm gonna go. Like, Brookhart's in real life. We are always Brookhart's in real life. I know, but we're just kind of crazy. Look how big her forehead is. It's called a five head, Peter. It's called a seven head. <laughs> Hamilton on, again. And look at this sweet treat Peter got me yesterday. It's not your typical 12 ouncer. But you wanna know what my issue with these are? The carbonation leaves faster, so you gotta drink it quicker. One last little glimpse. I didn't make the bed because I knew we <laughs> Of this room, which will be James's room. And what we have been calling the baby room, James's room. One last glimpse of it like this before we move everything around. I'm about to, Sarah's gonna work on the closets, but I need to, <laughs> I need to get all that out first. It's so funny that this is happening because for so long we've just like referenced this room as the baby room and like I've stretched in here, I've meditated in here, I know you've spent time in here just to like feel our babies and at first like one of my biggest reasons that I didn't want to switch was because of that because of, like we've like manifested in this room but like if we've learned anything from all this is like things don't always go as you planned right so I'm excited that he's gonna have such a nice big room mm -hmm. and a change of scenery for us and it'll be worth it what the heck this was the thing I was most stressed about like the bed's gonna be annoying because I have to like take it apart. Yeah. But I've done it new numerous times and it's just like a patience thing. This is what I was nervous about. Because it's like biggest and bulkiest. And we actually had a newest. And we actually, because like. Uh, we actually I, had an injury. Yeah, I cut my hand open. Um, that dresser is actually on casters. Yeah, so, so that I, works I, out well. That's easy for me to move. Don't on. mind this blanket. That blanket I used as like a. That's how we used to get. I put this on that to slide it on the tile. But then I had to take one of the sides off. Aye, aye, aye. But this but is a like, big deal. Yeah, now I'm just going to clear space off. I need to clear the mattress out and everything about it so I can take that out because I need to get that out so I can move that over. So I thought the day bed was going to be the thing that was the most annoying. But I forgot how obnoxious this bed frame is to, to take apart and put back together. But that is now done. This looks more like a real bedroom now, doesn't it? Yeah. Here. And Eve is Eve's getting accustomed to our new hangout tile spot. Closet looks okay. great. Yeah. Simplistic. Love it. Okay. Okay, we're getting there. Took the ring light out. Brought some more of the furniture pieces. Sarah made the bed. Yeah. With the bed in here made and that with the light on and the closet. So it reminds me of my our first apartment slash with a similar layout of our last apartment. Yeah. But the warm lights and the coat like the closedness. Yeah. Makes it feel very cozy. Perfect for that snap to go right here. That snap go there. 
we'll make Eve a little pile of blankets right here to sleep in like she used to at our last apartment. The first apartment we moved in down here. Yeah. We're going to have to put something there. We're going to figure all the walls out. Oh, you know I love that. I know. I'm actually loving this situation. It feels cozy like our very first apartment that I would I would move in that apartment in a heartbeat if the landlord called us and said the unit was available. If they could just add one more room. But I want to show you the level of sophistication difference between Sarah and myself. Here is the sophisticated, glamorous Sarah Brookhart making delicious homemade gumbo. It's not gumbo, it's jambalaya. Jambalaya, my apologies. I'm putting jelly on crackers. That's just the <laughs> This is the appetizer I'm making for Sarah and me. It's the worst when you run out of Mr. Oh, it is. No! Just a little, little appetizer to cleanse the palate. Get, <laughs> get the, the juices rolling. I got lots of celery and lots of onions cooking right now. I've never made double eye before. But you haven't? I feel like... What about you did? I feel like Jenna used to make it all the time at mom's. Like Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, but we haven't made it since we've been vegan. So I also used zucchini and peppers and carrots for my veggies. I'll link below the recipe I briefly followed. I'm not going to add in the crushed tomatoes until I dish out Peter's because he's going to go on a run and tomatoes always mess with his stomach. So he's going to have his a little bit more plain. And then I also made this black bean dip with tomatoes and jalapenos, a bunch of lime juice and nutritional yeast, salt, pepper, garlic. Um, you can eat it with a fork or with chippies and I just mashed it down, but left some whole beans in there too. Ooh, this is looking good. That's their point, I think she pointed out. That's mine, that's hers, that's dips, that's chips, that's Eve. Looking like a delicious dinner. I'm so excited, it smells really good. Great, and then there was like, after I took yours out, there was way too much tomato, so when I make the leftovers, I'm gonna have to make more rice to like- Soak it up? Soak it up. Um, but overall, Do you see a fancy drink you're going to make for yourself? Maybe. So, Peter is out on his run. I just finished folding the last of our laundry and putting it away. I have newsies on. Um, I'm just going to chill the rest of the night. I did get a book. It's called Birth Without Fear. Um, I kind of talked about it in the live stream today, but basically, we have a lot of experience with kids. Like, obviously, we don't know what it takes to be a parent just yet. We're very new to all of this. Um, but one of the biggest unknowns is actually giving birth. And so I um, I think I'm gonna read this book tonight. Somebody that I follow on our infertility Instagram um, shared it and really liked it. So I'm going to read that while he's out. It is a longer run, so he might not be back for a while. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna relax. Maybe watch a little bit more newsies. Um, and just soak in the last hours of the weekend. Ooh, it is late. I don't even know. It's gotta be like 11.30 almost at night. I really didn't think I'd get out here and do it. I was supposed to run 11 miles today. Uh, actually, I've been really bad. I haven't been looking at my Chicago training schedule, but like the automated email from my virtual coach last week said, your long run this weekend is 11 miles. What's one more? So I don't know. I didn't check. I don't know if she was joking around and it was a 10 mile run and she was saying, hey, do that one more. Well, if it really was scheduled to be an 11 mile run. But I woke up late this morning and then with the festivities of today and everything, I thought, I'm going to say I'm running these 11 miles. But I wouldn't be surprised if I end up not. But because Sarah's the best motivator in the whole world, I'm out. I even almost stopped at 10, but I was like, you know what? I told myself, what's a half more mile? Because if I go a half more mile away from home, guess what, I gotta go home. So I got that, I went an extra half mile. Um, so I will get my 11 miles in. But I wanted to show right here where I'm at, downtown Orlando, right outside the courthouse. Um, really reflective weekend because I wasn't, I've been so busy with work and some of the protests have slowed down, but the main group I follow has had been still going out. But I thought it was kind of fitting to end, or to shoot my little running shot right here in the courthouse because this is where I first protested after um, our little staycation in the Airbnb ended. And I've learned so much and I've experienced so much and my eyes have been opened a whole lot. 
and that's not going to change for Sarah or myself or the vlog. Um, we, we've said it more in the, since March with COVID and not going to theme parks and we said it back when we had the miscarriage with Sweet Pea and all the struggles that this is a daily vlog. This is the life of the Brookharts. This is the Brookhart Project. So if you don't agree, if you do agree, if you are here for the theme parks whenever we're there, if you're here every single day, no matter what it is, Sarah and I respect that. We thank you for hanging out with us, but we're gonna do us. And that means even though George Floyd's murder was weeks and weeks ago and Sandra Bland, Sandra Bland's was years ago, um, Breonna Taylor's was months and months and months ago now. They're still happening, there's still injustices, there's still police brutality, there's still social things that need to change. Just like people need to be more involved in their local politics, regardless of social injustices and police. They just need to be, people need to be more involved. So, you're still gonna see those things from time to time again because Sarah and I are made it a point to be more involved. Anyway, I think I've now rambled a little long just to milk some of this walk before I head back to a quicker pace here, but we love you, each and every one of you, no matter if you watch us for five minutes or 50 years, because we're just gonna keep doing our thing because we love it. I gotta go now. So I'm getting our new bedroom set up for the night, and I really don't think he gets that this is connected, because I was just in that bathroom and she thinks I'm still in there. No one's in there, baby. Come on. Eve has always had a thing for the edge of carpet, so we always have to block that. I brought in her bed, and then I even made this corner extra cozy, kind of like our old apartment. So I'll be very curious to see how she does tonight, if she's gonna be confused, um, or what. So, fingers crossed, everyone sleeps good. Oh no, battery's dying quickly. I gotta do the message really quick. It is Sunday, it's July 5th. I ran 11 miles. And the message is by Jacqueline Winspear. Grace isn't a prayer you chant before receiving a meal. It's a way of life. Yes! Okay, so far Eve's kind of freaked out by the room situation. Yeah, but we'll see how it goes and report back tomorrow. Yeah. I'm getting decorations situated for this room. Simple, simple addition. Simple, simple. It's good to be home. It's good to be home. We know what our goals are. We know what we hope to accomplish. And believe me, it's the most exciting and challenging assignment we've ever tackled at Walt Disney Productions. <laughs>